inspiring. He promised that he's going to shift our minds. And what else? He also said, have you got your dancing shoes? <laughs> so did you bring your pants? Okay. So he promised interaction and he promised fun. And that was one of the results that we got from the culture survey. So on that note, I would like to call on Tony. Let's welcome Tony. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. afternoon. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. There we go. <laughs> to start, can, can you start to get those off? Thank you very much for your time and attention and being reasonably prompt. I do have one negotiation to make. Um, because we're going to be doing some interactive stuff, it may take an extra five or ten minutes. Are you okay if I squeeze five or ten minutes at the end? Are you okay with that? Yes. Are you, are you cool? Uh, my God, is to give you the best venue possible. So if you're cool with an extra 10 minutes out of your life, that's wonderful. Okay. One of the things that I, I thought would be valuable for you guys is to show you to you. Who looked in the mirror this morning? When you shaved or... Did you look in the eyes or did you just look at what you were doing? Very few people look in the eyes and, and get to see the soul inside. So my goal is to show you to you that you can step back and say, I can do something new, something different. So I have a set of uh, six CDs. It's my Life Shift Foundation. I normally sell this for 3,000 Rand. Uh, it's six CDs, six hours of intense coaching on action, wealth, leader, mind, health and heart shift. I'm giving it away free. Who wants it? Please give a round of applause. So here's my question. Why, why didn't you get up? Or you? No, I'm, I'm very, very serious. Why didn't you get up? Uh, but, but you could have walked. to see the identity that people have about certain confident behaviors. Who would like to be wealthier? So my question is, why are you not? No, I'm serious. I'm very serious. You see, I'm a cash, I'm a cash billionaire, so one of the reasons you should listen to me, the why, is I'm already a... There's always somebody that doesn't believe me. There's always somebody. Hold on. When you meet Donald Trump, do you ask, are oh, you a million in quachas or pesos or dollars or what? Fifty, fifty billion. If you can read. So one of the reasons is I'm a billionaire. But interesting to see that some people think that you're a hooligan if you stand up and you go and take some. Who would like more fun in their life? What are you waiting for? Who wants more sex, drugs and rock and roll in their life? What are you waiting for? I'm very serious. What are you waiting for? So I heard you guys are doing culture change. Finish the sentence for me. Culture change is a waste of money because what? Because? Strategy each culture for breakfast. Old statement. Old. Times are tough. Hey? <laughs> so, what is, why is it a waste of money? No, how to change waste of money if it is not applied correctly? There we go. There's always an if in something. And that's our problem with our life is, I'll take a chance if. I'll do this if or when. On a scale of 0 to 10, how proud of you of your organization? Put up, or 5, 0 to 5. On a scale of 0 to 5, how proud are you of your organization? Pride. 
Pride, zero to five. Pride, are you proud of your organization? Keep your hands up. On a scale of zero to five, how, how well do you think you're performing in the market in delivering service to customers? Show me the fingers. Oh. There's a thing called Dunning-Kruger, the Dunning-Kruger effect. And the Dunning-Kruger effect says... Okay, well, we've got, we've got the market's going to give you a score. The Dunning-Kruger effect is where somebody thinks they're better than they really are. Like some of the leaders we've seen in the world. The challenge is, we often rate ourselves badly, but as a group we'll often overrate ourselves. Here's your rating. Based on my research before I came to this talk, I wouldn't do business with your company. I'm, very, I'm serious. I sat down and I did my research and I went through it because I thought, you know, PPS, you're a mutual fund, you can share in the profits, and it's one of the best. At the end of my research, I thought, I'm sticking with my discovery on the boys. So the, here's the reality. Out of a, out of a possible 10, you 2.1. Most of your, your score is two. In customer service, most of them are a one or a two. Here's my concern. Is you can't even convert 10% of the unhappy people to happy people. Even worse, 214 hours to respond to somebody saying, you're giving me bad service. We live in the 21st century, guys, where seconds matter. This is Hello Peter. Yesterday. In fact, last night about 12 o'clock. This is the latest. Hey. That's what I love. Isn't it? The R. No. Oh, that's, that's for insurance. <laughs> that's a category insurance. <laughs> so, here are the top guys. Because they didn't have their logos there, I don't think. The market will always give you the feedback with love, the reality. Whenever the score is, I don't care. My goal is to give you a big enough why. Why do we need to listen? Why do we make a change? Why do we do this? What are we going to get out of today? And that's my whole goal, is just to open the door of, of shit, to wake you up and shake you up to say, ooh, there's room for improvement. Biggest room in the world? Room for improvement. Who would like to improve? What are you waiting for? Hey? Okay? Yeah. So, the, there is a, the challenge that you have as leaders is you've got to get people to perform better. You've got to bring out their best. The question is, how do we bring out your best? Are you performing at your best? If not, why not? And so this guy, Art Nathan, says you can't teach employees there's a story that says, hire for attitude, train for skill. Anybody heard that? Yes. Hire for attitude, train for skill. It's a really good idea. Because changing attitudes is a real challenge. Isn't attitude part of culture? Real challenge. There's a bank that spent in excess of 25 million to move the needle like 3% on their culture. Culture is hard to change because people approach it the wrong way. See, I don't agree with him. In the work that I do, in the healing, and the development, and the self-mastery, I've seen people completely transform in a weekend. Anybody read the book The Alchemist? I do human alchemy. And that's what I bring to an organizational space where we change how you think, feel, and act. I've had people that hate each other on Monday, love each other by Wednesday. Do you think it might change the culture? So your choice is to create a rev what I call a revolutionary workplace. I've spent 40 something years Packaging, testing, developing, refining, exploring. And I've created a framework. Because you can do a million things to improve performance. But what are the ones that actually move the needles that are going to be impact the bottom line for you, the triple bottom line? And so I have a concept called Revolutionary Workplace. It's about people, teams, leadership, and culture. People first. People first. People first. What did I just say? People, people first. Teams, leadership and culture. At the end of the day, what are you working for? Why do you work? Why do you, what, what gets you up in the morning? Why do you come to work? Who, who, who works? Who would work for half their salary? You love what you do so much, you'd work for half your salary. 
Okay, so we've got a full room of financial slats. Okay. <laughs> no, but think about it. There are people that, that donate, they volunteer, they, they're not financially well off, but they're doing what they love. Who loves what they do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Opportunity. So it's about people first. People, teams, leadership, culture. But you notice the culture is the top component, the foundation is everything with people. For me, the whole goal of, of business is people, planet, and profit. You know, today we have a billion people in Africa, about 2055 we'll have two billion. Just think of it. No food, no water, no electricity, no leadership, two billion people crowding around, around where there is food and clothing and water. Times, tough times are coming. So we all have potential of some kind. Are you using your potential? Do your staff use your potential? As you as a manager, as a leader, your goal is to expand and, and activate that potential. Anybody here um, like a left-brainer, accountant, actuary, lawyer? You can put your hand up, so it's safe, it's safe. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a left-brain techie, I'm a computer programmer, RPG and COBOL, but I jumped the fence, now I hack human software rather than computer software. <laughs> But neurons that fire together, wire together. And people that are focused on numbers the whole time, that's all that matters to them. I went into the workshop for Grand Font and senior management team, and before the event, I interviewed the lady, like we, we were talking. She said, you can't use that word. I said, I didn't swear, did I? She says, no, you can't use the word love. You'll lose all respect from my directors. And I thought, yo. <laughs> I interviewed every one of them for half an hour, 27 or 28 of them for half an hour on the phone each. And I opened the workshop and I said, good morning, I'm probably in front of the most intelligent IQ people I've been in front of for a long time. I said, but on an EQ basis, Jörg's at the bottom of the queue. He's like, ooh. At the very end, the boss came and said, you're right, we lost our soul. Because all we focus on is numbers. And my goal is to wake you up and shake you up to say, people matter. Because you've got to have power and you've got to have the ability to use your potential. If you've got no power, if you, anybody got sleep problems? Sleep will take down a gorilla. For every hour of sleep that you miss, you're about 6% less happy. There's some grumpy, frumpy. But without the power to take action, without the power to think and be aware and conscious, nothing's going to happen. But you also have to have the ability to think through the heart. The ability to care for somebody. And that's why I'm, I'm playing with the left brain and the right brain guys. You know, the HR people all were, who was it? Isaac. I watched him hugging everybody as he came along. You know, that's, that's the norm. So, your, your name is sir? Greg. Did you hug anybody here today? You see what I mean? I don't know hugging people. <laughs> but without the action, there's talk, 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 but without walk the talk, Nothing happens. You know, I was blessed when I was 17 and a half. My best friend's father died in my arms. Anybody know Cape Town? Musenberg mm -hmm. Station? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's there still. Musenberg Station to the, to the sea, there's a white house. We lived in that house. The beach, the water came up against our walls. And one night my father, my, my best buddy and I were going out and we were jousting with his dad and we went out that night and about four in the morning I heard a scream. And I ran out and there Daryl's father was having a heart attack. And he died literally in my arms. And that didn't wait, wake me up enough either because then I crashed my paraglider. I fell 50 meters in the Drakensberg in hospital for three months. Hole in my chest, hole over here, smashed. Only that woke me up enough to say time. Time to take action. Time to do what you've been threatening, promising. But the problem is we worry about what people think. Have you ever seen the old ladies with purple hair? I don't have much that I can have purple. But the old ladies, do you know why they wear purple hair? Because they don't give a shit what you think. <laughs> they're at the point of life where they actually don't care a damn. And the moment you can get to that point with love, and not be obnoxious. Or well, they're blind, yeah. But the moment you can get away from worrying about what other people think is the, way, the day you have more freedom. 
So on a scale of 0 to 10 in your sheet that I've given you there, that little sheet with the red rev across the top, how much of your potential are you using right now in your life that you're not yet one? Um, are, are there, any, there must be some spare sheets like this. Oh, there we go, at the back. So on a scale of 0 to 100, I'll get you. How do you measure, just get a general sense of like, how do you, what do you think? Just generally in your life, right? Just generally in your life, get a, a kind of how much do I think I'm using? Because you're right, the question is how do I measure that? So, so how do you know what you can do or can't do until you stretch completely? And even then when you stretch completely with the right context, we can take you a bit further. So on a scale of 0 to 100, what did you write? 60, 50, anybody want to share? You, you can't out of it. 7, 7 or 70. So here's my problem, is if you put your score high on your potential, I think you're squeezing out the chance of being great. Because imagine you could only for the rest of your life get a 70% increase in salary or income or wealth. Would you be happy? No. So the problem is, I'm showing you you what, what you, this is how you see you. This is your identity of you. Because if you put a score of 10, if you're thinking you're only going to use 10%, you've got huge potential. But if you'd like 70 or 80 or 90, yeah, I'm close. And you're not. You're so far away. Because that's a mistake to measure by time. Because you never know when you're going to die. Everybody's got the same amount of time, 144,000 seconds. Are you, and that's my thing is, do you invest it in good stuff, worthy stuff? Because you're going to die one day. We all got the same amount of time, whether you're a billionaire, trillionaire, or a pauper. We all have the same amount of time. But the reality is time doesn't exist. Because can you change yesterday? Can you change tomorrow? Who said yes? Play with me, who said yes? Make me a billionaire quickly tomorrow? No, no, make me a billionaire. Have we still got change it? We can get you another Oh, you're right. Of course you can. Now, in fact, I have a trillion at home. But the reality is, you can't change tomorrow, but you can influence it what it can be. I'm going fishing in Mozambique soon. If I want to be in Mozambique tomorrow, I better be moving that way today. So my question is, what are you doing today to move you to a better tomorrow? What did you do today to grow yourself? To be a better soul, happier, healthier, wealthier, slimmer. <laughs> well, I don't know, I just lost 16 kilos. And then I found four. <laughs> you have potential. What's going to happen for you to, to use it? Is only when the pain is big enough, or your why is big enough, or somebody loves you enough to drag you to where you promise that you want to be. And I've got a process at the end I'm going to show you that will guarantee that you take action. So, I think this is the next slide. Everybody, well, where is it? Everybody, please stand, please stand. One, two, three, and... Oh. What happened to our sound? Both sides. Have a seat, let's go. So, on your sheet, Mark, how much of your potential did you use for that dance? <laughs> so where's your sheet? But Mark, I need you to write it down that you can see it. Because when we, can, when we only hear it, we can ignore the message. You know, very often wives speak to husbands a thousand times and nothing happens. Only when they suddenly leave, the guy wakes up and says, Ooh, why didn't you tell me? My question is, dancing's nice, it feels good, it costs nothing. I saw some guys like the back, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this other lady here, like, yeah, 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 Elvis Presley. Who do you think has more fun? <laughs> Who controls Elvis's fun? <laughs> Elvis controls Elvis's fun. And the moment you worry about the other people thinking, and I've lived there for half of my life, you're going to be a prisoner. Who, who brings more energy to the party? Elvis. We all have stuff. We all have baggage and stuff. 
Anybody been, be been betrayed before? Anybody lost a loved one? Lost a dog? Money? We all got the same baggage, people. Just the problem is some people carry it with them every day. And other people have put it down. I don't know. The problem is if you're carrying it still, it's going to impede your potential. And you're going to live through it and project onto others. Because they say if you spot it, you've got it. Anybody been angry recently? Okay. If we can't change, we can't change yesterday and we can't change tomorrow, all we have is now, 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 now. So here she's carrying her baggage, which is blaming someone else, I'm assuming a person. Oh, well, 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 why, why would you carry their bags? Give him his money. <laughs> If you've been angry and you've, you've pointed to another person, thing or situation, they have your power. Which means they, can, if, let's, can we choose a name, can I choose a name of a guy? Mickey Mouse made you angry. So if it's Mickey Mouse, then Mickey Mouse is in charge of her, in control of her and has the power. Is that the truth? No, it's not. It's such a lie. Mickey Mouse has got no power. He's a yapper. Well, she's a yapper. Who makes, who truly is the one that makes you angry? Self. Say that again. Self. You're the one. They're just a stimulus. They don't go inside and mess with the chemicals. and They, they do stuff on the outside. Like, nee, 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 nee. And it's your lack of discipline, lack of awareness, lack of consciousness that allows programs to run. Now old programs, old habits. Neurons that fire together, wired together. The truth is, you're the wizard. You're the one that makes yourself happy, mad, bad, glad, or sad. So let's go to the other side of the coin. If you're the one that makes you or angry, who makes you happy? Happiness is a choice. We've all got so much resources to choose to be happy, but not many people decide to be. So why is this potential think how much of your potential using is so important because it's a habit you live by habit and that's going to force you to how you do anything is how you're going to do everything when you show up and that's your brilliant that's your constraint that's your prison you want more anything be the one neil donald walsh says you want more love be the source of it you want more happiness be the source of it you want more fun be the source of it. What do you want? Be the source of it. Choose, wake up. Now we live in the present. It is a present. It is a gift of now. And so you were talking about earlier. So Manu was saying, you know, be present. We carry so much static from the past which you can't change. Let it go. Choose, walk out of here lighter. And we carry so much maybe fear, worry, concern about the future. You can't change stuff there. Well, look, the only place you have is right now. So take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and scan your body. How are you feeling right now? How are you feeling right now? Above the ground, breathing. Everything else is a bonus. We cool. We, we live in heaven. Your biggest nightmare is the rest of the world's hell. People don't understand how blessed we are. On your sheet, just quickly mark. Mindset. How good a mindset do you think you got out of 0 to 10? How good do you think is your skill set in the relevance of the context that you work in? How good is your leadership skill 0 to 10? How resilient you are? How much peace do you have? Just very quick. 5 seconds each one. Give yourself where you are and where you want to be. So, mindset. Are you good? Do you want to improve it? Skill set, do you want to improve it? Leadership, resilience, peace and success. Who's got areas they want to improve? Only half. Wow. Oh, the others, they're arrogant that you think you're so good you don't need to improve. <laughs> Go and look up Danny Kruger effect. So this is a serious part of it. And I'll play the whole song. It's three minutes. Pick a buddy next to you. You can fill it in on your sheet. What is the thing that's blocking you from using your potential? Really? What is the thing? What is the main thing that you're not living to your fullest potential? Is it something you're scared of? Something you're worried about? Something from the past? Something from the future? What is the block that stops you living your dream? 
Your freedom, your love, abundance, peace, joy, happiness, wealth, sex, drugs, rock and roll, money. What is it that's kept you from having what you want? So chat with a buddy and you can write it down. Just share with somebody on the side of you. One block and three things you can do to overcome that. What's your main blockage and what are you going to do to overcome it? So did you get a solution to your block? Who's got a solution? Come on. That's, that's not a real block. It's all in It's all in your mind. Think about this. It's nothing real. So this is a model that I've put together over 40 years. And most people want improved results. So they think by doing the culture stuff around the context and actions, you can make it a great place to work. Problem is it takes lots of time, lots of money, doesn't always deliver. Most M&As, 80% of merchant and acquisitions fail because of culture. Every company I research has got a culture problem. Maybe in one department it's okay, but generally the culture is a challenge. But what I've come to understand is unless you go beneath this line down to who am I, the static and the programming and the fear and the experience and your beliefs and your mindset, unless you get to your warm way, nothing's going to change in a longer term basis. When you do any kind of thing, if you're the leader of your team, my goal is to give you tools and strategies and make you think. If you want to increase performance, you can't just send a person on a, on a skill set workshop. You know, bad attitude, good skills is hell. <laughs> Tell me you haven't been in a space where the guys got, got the skill, but they got such a bad attitude, hey? <laughs> Listen, I used to have a, a, a girlfriend that was a, an insult diver. Who knows what an insult diver is? You don't know. You'll be sitting, you'll be standing talking, there'll be an insult somewhere over there, and she'll dive to get the insult because her self-worth, self-esteem and attitude was so cut. She wanted to be able to sit, or she wanted to be able to be the victim. <laughs> now come on, who knows people like that? They're energy thieves. You know, you, you, you have a conversation when you walk away, it's like, oh my gosh, like really drained. And then the other energizer buddies, when you leave them, it's like, hey, let's go and change the world. I say everybody brings happiness. Some bring happiness by coming into the room. Some bring happiness by leaving the room. Which one are you? Are you brave enough to ask people around you, am I the one that brings happiness by coming or going? Are you sure? The challenge that you have and the opportunity is to, to start to understand that you get more power when you change the identity and who I am and the why than all of this other stuff that you're trying to push. Think about this. When you're dealing with people, they are complex machines. And then you've got a team dynamic into the process. Unless you go to the foundation, you're not going to have sustainable change. And let me tell you, a one degree change at the bottom here is a thousand degrees up there. It's huge power. And that's the kind of work that I do is very different. There's always tears in a workshop, there's always hugging, there's always people completely transforming the consciousness level. But then it's life, forever. It's not just, that was an interesting workshop, here's the manual on the, on the shelf, goodbye, nothing changes. In, in looking to understand performance, because I've spent my life studying it, I thought, how, how do we put down a framework that will show you where you are? And here's what I think most of you guys, what we call a pleasant present. It's such a pleasant present. It's, we're in a comfort zone. It's like a, it's, it's like a tie. I hate ties. And so you're stuck in this comfort zone because of judgments and beliefs and values and behaviors, which is why most of you didn't jump up and come and get the CDs. Then there's the, the, there's the probable what you can within your life probably do, and then some people spend lots of money getting coaching. But you know, coaching will never stretch past your internal belief system and expectations of what you think you can do. And I don't care, in normal coaching models, the grow, whatever those models are, they will never take you past your internal mental limit, that identity of who I am. Is, is this permissible? You've got, you've got culture issues, your home culture issues, that certain things aren't allowed. You've got your identity, if this is who I am, my picture of you guys, you're part of God. You're, each one of you is a spark of the most powerful force in the universe, and so am I. And we had to learn to dance. That's the only constraint. 
Am I living to my potential? No. Why not? I'll, I'll explain this now. So context, your culture, your workplace environment plays a huge input. You can have great people in a really good culture and you'll break them. Three weeks, you can break anybody. 95%, 99% of bad culture, bad context, bad leadership. People join a company, vision, mission, values, leave, up one level relationship and horizontal relationships. They don't leave the company, they leave you. Because you've got a bad attitude or a bad whatever or an unfriendly. You can't be how you want to be. You've got to be what will do to get the best out of them. The law of cybernetics says the machine with the greatest flexibility is the one in charge. Leaders have to be that. Flexible to find a way in. How do I get the best out of you? What does it take to, to get the best out of each individual person? So you have potential, but my challenge is because I'm a pusher, why do we have to have limited potential? Why can't we expand our potential? How do we expand your potential? So I work in an environment where guys make a million dollars in a weekend. I want mental. Million US dollars, not even Zim dollars. Yeah. It kind of stretches your, your boundaries and possibility, well, your potential. If you want to be doing big things, you've got to be around big places with people that are doing it already. You don't have to do it on your own. There are really people doing the kind of stuff already. And then there's what's possible. What is, now, what is humanly possible? Right now, humanly possible, let's look at money. Um, I don't know. Who are the richest boys? All the richest. Buffett and those, you know, they're into the trillions. That's what's possible. How close are you into that line of trillions of US dollars? What was it that got them to be where they are? That they, they've, they've, they've created the boundary of what's possible. But here's the challenge. The world isn't, sta isn't still anymore. This is a strong oak. Do you know how much 500 kilos is? It's, it's about my jet ski. You will not pick it up off the ground. I can't even drag it on the beach. So he went from a pleasant peasant with coaching to break what's permissible to his full potential. He was the guy that made what is humanly possible. And then came him. <laughs> Who won? Who was the first person to run the four minute mile? Come on, guys. Roger Bannister. He was, he was the first guy to run it, physically. But who ran the first four minute mile before him? His coach. His coach had the belief system and the possibility of what's humanly possible. And he had to get Bannister to believe in that possibility to push past his potential until he eventually did it. He went against all science, all value system, all medical doctors, scientists said it's physically impossible, you can never run the four minute mile. Do you know that today, 17 year old school children are running the four minute mile. When one person does it, another person, within weeks of the banish the four minute mile, other people started doing it. It's based on the consciousness of the space. What is your consciousness? Do you come from a constraint? No, we can't. Do you come from the possibility? Let's push. Let's go 10x. If I said to you, 10x your salary in a year. It's very different if I said to you, increase your saving by 5%. And so my challenge for you is 10x. 10x your life. In your impact with people, in your leadership, in everything that you do. My challenge for you is 10x. Competition is growing. The top A students in India are more than the, all of the population of America. I work for Tata. We did some work for Tata Consulting. He says, if you are one in a million, do you know how good one in a million is? If you are so damn good, you're one in a million. When you go for a job in India, there's 1,400 in the queue before you. The world is changing. Average eats dog food. Both my parents, 62 mother, 60, 66 father, died paupers. Why? Because Why? I'm not a life support system for a wallet. Here is your job in the business. This is the foundation of your job. Somebody joins the company, 
They add value and then they leave. The reason why you do all the money and culture and all of these leadership developments is that you get them up to speed faster, you increase the level of, of value that they add, and they stay longer. I was reading recent, recently the millennials, more than 60% are ready to move within a year or 18 months. You are no longer until death do us part employer. you got to be super awesome to attract and retain. And just by doing that, you can the return on investment you get from staff can be 2x, 2.5x. I've got with a sales team where you can see that. But this is your goal. Get them up to speed faster, use their full, fullest potential, and keep them as long as possible. That's the fundamental reason why you are paid to do what you do. So you want to know why, what, you know, about the money? I did some research before, I got all your, tweet, all your Twitter addresses, and I did some research, and here's your future. In this room, 49% are going to die by the time, we're going, by the time of 60, 65, we're going to be in poverty. You're shaking your head. So let's play with you. If you stopped earning tomorrow, how long before you run out of cash? <laughs> don't, be, don't, be, don't feel bad. Most of this room are going to say the same thing. 29% won't make the line of 65. Health issues. 12% will have to work beyond the age of 65. My friend, one of my best friends, mother just died recently, a white old lady, 101. What's the oldest person you know alive today? 100 is not going to be unusual for people. If you're running out of money, and thank you for the honesty, if you run out of money tomorrow, how you do anything is how you do everything. If you run out of money tomorrow, how are you going to fund from 60 to 100? Wake up! With love, wake up people! You don't understand the tsunami that's coming. And you got a job. I was in Zimbabwe a few weeks ago. 90% unemployment rate. You got a job. You got a business, an organization that's successful, got history, got benefit, got value. Time to make this thing fly. See, I mean, like really fly. 7% will be okay, and 3% will be successful, happy, healthy, and wealthy. Who's going to be there with me? Do you think your current behavior is going to get you there? In the top 10%? Be careful. My, my Anglo-Saxon white culture, nobody looks after me. I don't have kids. If it's, if it's not me, me, or me, it's going to have to be me. You've got Ubuntu and all of that nice neighborly stuff. I give you food and clothing. I don't even know my neighbors. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Here's the problem. We're all too reasonable. You know, we'll, we'll adjust, we'll accommodate. Anybody been in a hot bath? You now you get in, you get in the bath and then you start putting the water like and you adjust a little bit, but eventually you get used to it, right? I mean you can you can get like used to really hot water. And we think it's clever. The problem is the frogs, if you put a frog in cold water and slowly heat the water, slowly, slowly, he's just like you. He says, Oi, this is getting warm, but I'll be reasonable, I'll accommodate, I'll adjust. And eventually he'll die, he'll get boiled. You are exactly the same. You're accommodating and you're adjusting and maybe I'll do it later, no, no, later, later. You're going to be boiled. Your goal is to help your, your, your staff, your teams wake up. Anybody ever been driving a car and you've fallen asleep? I've done it a few times. Dangerous stuff. We all fall asleep. During the day we go unconscious. Think about this. The record that this guy's jumping is about eight foot. That's about this eight foot there, kind of, huh? Exactly. Competition is coming hard and fast. It's more than justice. The, the bar's only been raised the whole time. Every day the bar's been raised. Competition is growing ever, ever more. So which of these, or where do you fit in? Have you developed yourself or there, or have you, done, have you done nothing, or you're just a, a sloth in the middle? You know? what's, what's that thing that he's using the, to change the TV channels? Um, no, it's an automatic income reducer. Who watches TV? 
No, no, no. Who watches TV? And who wants to be wealthier? Who's using the automatic income reducer every night for hours? And then you bleat. The problem is, average is dog food. If you're not in the top 10%, you're in poo. In, the competitive, in that competitive, uh, competitive Hello Peter, you guys are like 64th out of. The, you're right, we don't have promoters. Nobody cares enough about you, satisfied enough to promote you. My whole goal is to wake up and shake them a little. So just don't burst my balloon right now, eh? <laughs> so, so think about this. Technology scares the heck out. You can't say that. I, I said my pet, he said the following statistic out. Excuse me, excuse me, it's wrong. So don't be a me, okay? Don't be me. Who would you take? The, a, the right mindset, but not the right skill set? Or B, the, the, the skills, but not the mindset? Who do you want? A or B? A. Who wants A? Who wants B? B. But think about this. How do you filter? How do you develop? How do you consciously, constructively develop a people for mindset? If, if you have an intention, but you don't do it. Because you can, you can suss somebody's skill out, not so, good to, not so easy to suss their attitude out, and really even harder to find their mindset. In research with managers around the world, 96% want mindset. But the question they asked the professor that did this, Professor Stoltz, is help us select a mindset. You've got to be aware that mindset matters more than skill set. Mindset takes a while to bend and change and improve and optimize beliefs, values, identities, skills you can get in a weekend. So tell me, what kind of skills are we going to need by 20, what, 2028? What are the skills we're absolutely going to need? When I had my, my computer company, in 1990 I was working at IBM, and the guy said to me, in the next 10 years, by 2020, by 2000, 50% of those jobs that we're going to be doing haven't been invented yet. Do you understand that? I didn't. In 10 years time, half of the jobs we're going to be doing in 10 years time we haven't even thought about yet. And it's only getting faster. <coughs> the challenge is we can't predict what skill set, but we do know what kind of mindset we want. Absolutely we know what kind of mindset we want in 10 years and we want right now. Who's got kids? Oh, lots. Wow, I love kids. I just can't finish a whole one. <laughs> I'm going to give you the most powerful, most powerful gift you can give your children. Have you ever said to your little Johnny or Mary, I'm so proud of you, you're so clever. Maybe we build them up with something that they, that some mental agility they've got. The problem is what happens the day they're not so clever? They're scared of losing your appreciation and validation, so what are they going to do? They'll lie, steal, crook, cheat. Because they come from a fixed mindset, fear-based process. If they come from a, a positive mindset basis, and you say, I really like what you did, I'm proud of you, they are willing and able to risk not being seen as perfect, and grow and, and build. If you're going to validate and upgrade your mindset of your child, don't validate them for being clever, Validate them for being creative, resilient, determined. All of the things that you want them to be able to do more of versus how clever they are. Think about this. In, a, in, a, in the growth mindset person, the person, the, the, the fixed mindset says, nah, don't, don't, we've done it before, it's not going to work, I won't use it. The growth guy says, even that's difficult, even that's a challenge, I will persevere through it. If you give the two, two opposites uh, a puzzle, a quite a tough puzzle, and they do it, you go to the fixed mindset kid and you say, do you want to do, the, do, you want to do a, a harder one or same or softer? No, no, I want softer. Oh, something, because I want to be able to be clever, be seen as, look how clever I am, Dad, significance. Whereas the growth mindset kid, you go to them and say, what well, do you want, same, softer or harder? He says, harder, I want to learn, I want to grow. How do you build that into your team? How do you interact with them so that you reverse the fixed mindset, fear-based worry, and you create a safe space, a safe culture, a safe context, 
where it's safe to, to explore and to discover and experiment and be creative and, and innovate. We know from the research of Professor Stoltz, these are the, the 20 something mindset qualities that are most desired by companies today. His research shows that people with these qualities can be up to seven times more valuable to the organization. Up to seven times more valuable as an individual, and up to 8.4 times as a leader. Leaders have huge impact. You have huge impact. My goal is to help you improve that impact. So I'm going to shake the cobwebs out and, and wake you up from that slumber. Think about that, which on, in your environment, in your context, what are the top two mindset qualities that you want in your people? These are all important, but which would be the, the biggest ones for you? The research shows commitment, honesty, trustworthy, adaptability. Those are the first, the top ones from those 96 percent of managers. In my research, I found most of most of life is in the brain, is in here. Nothing that really matters is on the outside. It's how you see yourself, how you talk to yourself. I used to play hockey, serious hockey, played for South Africa, Western Province, Southern France, World Defense, hockey slap. But if you heard how I spoke to me inside, I missed the ball, you wasted every white skin, you stupid. Who's got a negative voice? We all got the little voice sometimes. The challenge is you've got to find a way to reverse that. But sometimes the voice is not yours. And there's tablets for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'd like to, to help you to, to improve your... We're going to take you through a quick process. Anybody had a coach, business coach? Do you pay for it yourself? Well done, that's very good. <coughs> Coaches today can get quite expensive. But a normal business coach is anything between sort of 1500 to three and a half grand for a session. For a professional coach. Our research has shown that peer coaching, so think about this, on a scale of 0 to 10 for your S1 score. Let's take business performance. On a scale of 0 to 10, how well do you think you're doing in business performance? Write it on the right hand side there, the S1. If 10 was doing absolutely wonderful and 0 was drink, 5 was average, what are, you, what are you doing and what do you think the second one is, what does it need to be? What's a, what would be a great level to be? Are you there? Just generally how, you know, how we're doing it business and what do we think it needs to be. And the goal is that you get two numbers and there'll be a gap in those numbers. So maybe you say we're at a three or four, but we should be a seven or eight, and then your gap's a four. Are, are we all with me? Say yes? yes, I'm with you, okay. So, so let's close the gap. You're gonna need, need to choose a buddy. Write down two behaviors on behavior one and two underneath the two there. So behavior one, behavior two, what are two things that you could do that you can improve? Actionable behaviors that you can improve to improve business. Just two, two key phrases. What are two things that you can do, 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 do? Action is what matters. What are two activities, actions, processes that you can do to close that gap from whatever that business gap is to make the gap smaller? So what I'd like you to do quickly is choose a buddy, stand up, and choose a buddy that you're gonna, that you're gonna do the process with need to stand up if you've done those two behaviors, behavior one and behavior two, grab a buddy. So then choose a buddy and stand up please so that I know that you're ready to go. Choose a buddy, stand up, grab a buddy. Read at number four, practice feet forward. I'd say Mr. Reader, Mr. Reader. Okay, we are 7% of the gym is working together. Google it, it doesn't happen. So how are you feeling? Anybody home? How are you feeling? Good or fair or great? Some people's battery's not in there. Eh? Tell me what is this, what is this fishy saying? What's in his head or her head? I can do it. I believe I can fly. I can do it. 
Conrad, what, what is this? What's in this fish's head? Okay, I'm a big fish, small pond. Too, too high won't make it. Suicidal. What's a fishy say? Can I, can I, can I will? The guys at the bank here? What's, what's a fishy say? You put your mouth open. The guy next to you can speak. Okay? So, what is a fish saying? This for me is a test of mindset. Because the fixed fear-based mindset will say, what happens if I fall, can't make it, dangerous. The, the, the growth mindset will say, new chance, new opportunity, new possibility. Let me understand. If you understand the importance of mindset, and it's not that one's right or wrong, it's just that's where the person is. But they are better. As times get tougher, mindsets matter more and most. So I have a concept called cons Consciously Constructive, when I had my computer company we did staff development training, self-development training, business development, every day. And hours of training, every morning. There's a concept called Deliberately Developmental, uh, there are two or three companies in the world you can look up Next Jump. Next Jump, they do half, 50% of time is staff development, 50% of time is staff development, the other 50% is commercial development. I don't think we'll ever get there for a long time. There are three companies in the world, but I'm sure we could do at least an hour a week at minimum, but ultimately an, at least an hour a day. So I'm challenging you to grow your people. Get a book, take a chapter, get one of them to stand and present it. Consolidate that into a summary, create a library. Time is short. I hate reading 500 page books. Just give me the, just give me the bullet points. And I spotted the spots at school. <laughs> the challenge that you have to work around and you need to be aware of for you and your staff is a thing called learned helplessness. And learned helplessness, they put dogs in a cage, but they couldn't get out and they shot them. So the dog learned, I can't do anything, so just take it. They then put them into a different cage where if, if they wanted to, the dogs could jump onto a safe pad and a large portion, like 80% of the dogs, just stood there taking the shock. They have been taught to be helpless. Every one of your people in your team has been taught like the elephant. How strong is an elephant? If it, if it wanted to break away from that pole at the zoo, could it? It's got easy. Why doesn't it? It's been programmed. It's been programmed through experience, through from long term. You're exactly the same. You've been programmed. You just aren't aware of it. And that's my goal today is to push you beyond that. The American pike, they put it in a big fish tank, divide it in two. One side the big fish, the other side its favorite food. It's, it's divided by glass, so the fish tries to go to its bait. Keeps hitting its snout on, on the glass. Eventually it learns, can't do anything. Do you know that when they take the glass up and the bait swims around the fish, it will die? Because it's running a program that says I can't. So it doesn't. The staff are the same. The biggest challenge that you have is to be able to reverse the internal belief system of I can. This is who I am. This is what I'm here to do, what I can bring, be, do, and have. I watched a program on TV, it was a marriage counseling kind of thing. And so it was a financial advisor, and they said, the financial advisor said to the guy, So by the time you're 65, how much do you want to have? And he said, $25,000. So he went to the wife and said, by the time you're 65, how much do you want to have? She looked at him and said, really? I want 30 million. Belief system. Belief system of control behavior system. What are the beliefs, the invisible beliefs that are part of culture change that you're not getting to? People are resilient. Habits are resilient. Is resilient in a good way and resilient in a bad way. You want resilience to be able to bounce back in stressful environments, but you have to find a way to break through those limiting belief systems, those limiting constraints that you've seen even that you've got today. You see, you can motivate people like this, but it doesn't last. And the scratches hurt. And you don't want to be seen as a big bear. You don't want to be the one that brings happiness by leaving the room. <laughs> In the research um, certified internationally for science of happiness at work, we know that happier people be, do, and have more. 
Happiness is a two-sided sword. One, help wake them up that they can be conscious that happiness is a choice that they make. And two, is how do you show up to make a great context, a great workplace, somewhere that is psychologically safe, that I can come and learn and grow and discover and encounter, where there's trust and connection and collaboration and communication and compassion. Or your left brain numbers only matters so. Because if you're in a leadership position, you need to jump that fence. <laughs> leadership is about people. Everything. It's about people creating the best. Now, we were, we were joking earlier on, I don't rebuild wrecks, I tune Ferraris. I've, I've made a choice to work with high-performance people. I give you the tools, the mindset, the attitude, the awareness, and the consciousness, and I'll drag you to success and happiness if I have to with love. But you have to volunteer that. Many people are happy just to sit and watch, 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 we go back to soccer, go back to TV, go back to the old, the old, do you know that people that have a triple bypass, medical danger, dangerous for you, the doctor says, Mr. DeVille, if you don't change your lifestyle, you're going to die. Do you know 85% of people go back to the lifestyle that killed them? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely crazy. We know from the work of David Rock, it's not thinking and mindset. It's absolutely encoded into your physiology. So he's got a model called SCARF. The brain is three times, the amygdala is three times more sensitive to danger than to pleasure. So your brain is scanning. Can I eat it? Will it eat me? Or could we have fun? But it's three times scanning for more danger than for the positive. The moment you, you attack somebody's status, the brain goes into alert mode. Defend, protect, shut down. Danger. It's not that they follow bull. That's how the brain is designed by God. In one tenth of a second, that's the emotion. They get that emotion. If you take away certainty, think about it. You, you know, some people say, you're just lucky to have your damn job. No. I say you catch more bees with honey than with vinegar. Who agrees? Same with your people. You've got to be the one that's conscious enough and caring enough to give them that autonomy, to give them that, that sense of mastery. You've got to upskill them and, and grow them and give them what they need, the tools, mental, physical, emotional, that they can be autonomous and you can say, that's what I want. How you do it, I don't care, but stay legal, stay between the lines, bring them to me. We all want to connect, we all want to belong. Core, core human need, love and be loved. Know this, core. In all of my work, the big, biggest money in the world, all these guys, 500 million boys that I coach, to love and be loved. Core. Oh. Driving need. And then fairness. In Zimbabwe, they have rules that if you employ somebody full time, you can't just fire them. It's even harder than here. So they've got other rules that you can hire contract people for 11 months, and then you can do that five times. To avoid the, the pain of employing bad people, they do the 11 month contract. So the 11 month contract people are under pressure to perform. The guys that have been employed, they just don't do nothing. That fairness button gets hit so badly, you must see the revolt. <laughs> it took two days to solve some of the problems. But be careful on fairness when it's not real, it's not real fairness, it's perception of the person that you're interacting with. Everything's perception. Reality is perception. If you're going to be a good leader, you're going to lead yourself, then you're going to be so damn incredible that people want to follow you. What is the number one skill of a leader? Shout. Getting followers. Yeah. But, but think of a good leader that you know. What made them a good leader? What makes a good leader? What are, what are some of the qualities that make a good leader? They inspire you. What else? Guys, what happened to the batteries? They motivate you, what else? They, they listen, absolutely. They empower you, give you the capacity. How would you like to know, they roll up the sleeves, how would you like to know how good a leader you are? I've got an assessment, do you want to do it? It'll take two, two minutes, and it'll give you an absolute, true reflection of how good a leader you, you are. You want to do it? Okay, but then you must please follow the instructions exactly, okay? 
Please follow the instructions exactly. Keep them, keep them face down. Do not look at the top. I'll take some on the other side. Yeah. Please keep them face down. Follow the instructions exactly. Keep it face down. Okay, pops up there. Please keep it face down. The, you can have the signs of happiness up. This will be the most incredible leadership test that will truly be revealing for you. So please follow the instructions exactly. Are we all good? All got to keep your face down. Keep the face down. Otherwise, I've seen the oaks took. I know it's your kind of luck. <laughs> are you ready? Yes. Come on, are you ready? Yes. You've got one minute and 45 seconds on your marks and set. Go. Two, three, four, five, two, thirty-five, fifty-five, sixty. 65 80 85 One minute he finished Oh my goodness Who doesn't know what on earth happened? We spoke about leadership quality is listening, eh? Hey? How many times before I told you to go did I say please follow the instructions exactly? Anybody? A zillion. More than 15 times I kept on front loading, making sure that you listen and you, you follow the instructions. And so if you had followed the instructions, here's what would have happened. You would have read. And if you then read everything carefully first and get to the number 15, now that you've been so smart and followed instructions, you have finished reading everything carefully as directed, only do sentence 1, 2, and 6, and quietly sit and watch the yahoos who think they are leaders. They turn the fool to themselves. Here's your problem. Your brain is so busy listening to yourself, you have no time to listen to anyone else. Slow down. Listen between the lines. Give people the respect of good, clear attention. We can't multitask. You think you can? I promise you, you can't. The value of a leader is such that they took an elephant, put a whole lot of people behind it, they did tug of war, and they eventually found that nearly the elephant could pull about 102 people. That's 102 people could hold the elephant. That's how strong she was. Some guy stood up and said, I think we could do better. Some guy stood up. Nobody went to him and said, uh, will you be the leader, please? Some guy stood up. They took initiative. said, I think we can do better. And he got 56 people working together, combined, collaborating, synergized. 56 people with a good leader equaled 100 and something people without a good leader. That's your job. Your goal is to create the why. Why is this important? Why is it going to happen? And it's got to be meaningful why for them, not for you. Now when a little kid says why, why, why? <coughs> That's your goal, is the why. Get onto YouTube, look up, look up Simon Sinek, start with why. But you've also got to get down to how are you going to show up? Are you a commanding demand? Are you the, 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 that will suck them along in the vacuum with you, that they'll follow you, like we said, building followers? Where are you on the scale of pressure? Because here's force. Up here is powerful. If you're going to be a high performance organization, you have to go to this level. So let me take you through what I wanted to show you. Because you can do all the graphs and all your stuff, but what happens if this is the score you get from your team? You're not going to do much. You're not going to do any culture change with that kind of impact. But that's the, the resource that you've got to work with. That's one of my real clients. Think about this. If you're going to be a good leader, you have to find a way for yourself and for your team to get rid of yesterday's junk. With love. 
Because that culture is a consequence, it's not something you can directly impact, directly affect, directly change at all. It's the shadow. It's, it's the consciousness of a person constrains what kind of culture you're going to have, whether you're going to have to change the culture. So I have a framework, a high performance framework that I've developed that I want to get to for you. Culture impacts 20 to 35 percent of your business performance. It's very hard to change because people don't understand what it is. And they try and change it. It's like trying to change a shadow on somebody. You can't. You want to get to the person. People first, teams, leadership, culture. Leadership style, how you show up. Are you that visionary leader, that coaching leader, or are you that demand and command and force brute? Today's kids, the millennials, you can't force anymore. There's too much choice, too many options. Dinosaurs cannot drive the machine anymore. You've got to come from a different mindset. You've got to create a meaningful place. They are internal customers. If you dance with your people like your internal customers, as much as you, you dance for your external customers, it will change your culture very, very quickly. Engagement is, is how much people like to work with their well, like, Think about this. Who, who would be happy to tell their best friend to come and work here? Imagine those who are not happy. Why? And please, as a leader, there are always engagement, Gallup shows engagement levels 12 to 15% are engaged, and they show about 17 to 18 to 20% are disengaged. In South Africa, it's up at 35% disengaged in a workplace. It's hell. Do not ignore the disengaged terrorists. They're giving you feedback about what maybe needs to happen. Listen. They're as strong as a tribe, and I've got some stuff around tribes, but they're as strong as a tribe. Do not ignore the tribe. The tribe has more power than the leader. I've seen tribes completely sideline side a leader. Come from appreciative, come from the positive, come from the possibility. Don't tell me what you don't want, tell me what you do want. I'm going to tell you not to think of something. Do not think of a red rose. What's in your head? But I told you not to, are you stupid? Say the words. To create the pictures, to create the thoughts and feelings that you do want, not what you don't. Come from that appreciative side. Mindset matters. In my life, it's my life's work, mindset matters more than skill set. How do you wake up in the morning? How do you interact with people? How do you recover from encounters? How do you approach the world? Do you look up at people who've got trillions and come from jealousy? Or do you look down at the people, the seven billion underneath us who have got nothing and come from gratitude. Nothing, from, nothing wrong with climbing for more. But do you come from love and gratitude or do you come from jealousy and I'm not enough? Execution is where everything matters. I don't care what, what you say. You can have the best foundation, the best car, the best tires, the best engine. But if you don't, where the rubber meets the road, if you don't have that system running, working, reliable, safe, certain. And that's where you're going to get your people. You are herding cats in the dark. You're getting work done by people, through people. You have to become super human manager. If you're a left brain animal, tough. You're going to have to learn how to manage the soft, mushy, warm, squishy soul. And it's lack. The culture you can hear by the language. If people are coming from the lowest, in, the lowest level, life sucks like in, in the, the gangs. You can see those people, birds of a feather flock together. Then it comes to the identity of, it's just my life, you know, you're okay, it's my life that sucks. And then we come to, we start to get the ego part, but that's most of your people, that's like 60 something percent of your staff. Very few companies do I ever see that are up at this level. We get them there, but it takes a little while. And that's your goal, is listen to the language, listen, to, listen. Listen beyond the words that you can understand. Stop the noise in the head to get you there. Training and development is important, but the return on investment is that. Relationships, fair, coaching. Those, that's your three areas of power as a leader. You're the one that's got to make it happen. You're the one right in front of that warm, mushy soul that can bring out the best in them. And you've got to find ways to get support that you can bring out the best in you. Very hard to be on your own. Very, very hard. We can predict the success of a team to 96.7% accuracy just on this formula. Because most people think one negative, one positive balances out. Research from Professor Lasada shows it takes three positives to neutralize one negative. 
interaction, communication, some kind of interaction with a person, make sure you have at least four or five positives to any negative. Be aware of these things when you're interacting with your people. Become conscious. How am I showing up? How am I leaving my people? I believe in the Hawaiian principle. Leave them in a better state than when you found them. Are you living that way? It's you, though. You're the one. You, that they're trusting you to be the one. So think of camps. If you're doing, I was doing the research with Culture IQ and Culture Change. I'm a boy scout. Think when you go camping. Nice warm marshes on the fire. Get together. How are you building certainty? That this thing is going to bring a better future. A lot of people, many people talk, very few people walk the talk. How are you giving them autonomy and the ability to use their talents in that space? Make sure that the meaning that you give is relevant to the person. You know, if you, if you talk about saving the frogs, I don't care. Save the fish, absolutely. You've got to make the meaning relevant for that person, the way you frame it. You want to show progress. The youngsters today, Tony Shea, Zappos, they discovered they're a call center. They, they put the peg three, in three years in the future, you could become a manager. And they discovered people, it's too far away. Make small. In six months, you can become level one supervisor. Six months or three months, you can become level two supervisor. Be able to show progress. See that you're making progress as you're improving the culture, whatever change process you're doing. People need to see success. Celebrate the success. Who likes the feeling of winning? You know that like, yes, like this. So where do you get it? I'm not at home. Okay, stay here, stay in the office. Where do you get that feeling? I got it, we did it. Once a month, once a year. And maybe once a year when you meet Target. What about the other 11 months? Make sure you do some kind of process where you can get that good feeling, that chemical feeling that will inspire you. And then social, we are social animals. Get people together, go and have lunches. There, there are apps that you can use now, Slack. I installed one last night on Slack, it's called Donut. It will link you with two new people. Go and have lunch with a new person every day. Go and play, learn, discover, grow. Be open for cross-pollination. And it's free. And here's my very last step for you. I promise that I'll give you a process that will guarantee you took action. Number one, you made a promise when you did the rave that you're going to do something. I'll give you my example when I got this. I hadn't spoken to my family for eight years. And I couldn't. So think about it. Is there something that you know you should do, could do, would do, if you did do, would change your life? Is there something in your life that you know you could do, would do, should do, if you did do, would change how you show up in the world? Can you think of something that you could do? Can you think of one thing that you can do and fill it in here, in this space? What's one thing that you can do that would be absolutely transformative in your life? You need to choose a buddy who's going to talk to you about that part of it. What's one thing that you could do that would improve your leadership power, your impact, how you show up in the world, how you show up with your teams? What's one thing that you can do? Do. Can you think of something? Write it in that square, please. In that bottom square, what is the measurable action? Make, I'm, I'm asking you to stretch here. I'm, I'm asking you to become like really provocative and, and stretch yourself. You know, for me, it was lose 16 kilos. I can tell you it's heaven. I heard the line, nothing tastes, nothing tastes as good as slim feels. <laughs> feels good, eh? <laughs> Another 10 to go, and then I'll be in heaven. The Ferrari will be back. So what's that one thing that if you couldn't do, if you did do, would be absolutely amazing in your life? Something, just one thing. One simple thing. Measurable, possible, visible. Step number two. My action insurance asset. For me, it was my disco. I had a mobile disco with about 285,000 rand of all my equipment and speakers and everything. My disco was what I put up as my action insurance asset. So think of something that you own free and clear, your watch, your phone, your phone, not kids, you can't put kids. <laughs> what do you own free and clear? An asset, a valuable asset, your wedding ring, your diamond ring, your engagement ring, your watch, something of value, something really valuable to you. Because the more valuable it is, the more certain you're gonna take action. House, car, 
Number two, something. But you see, this is the value. The bigger the value, the more certain I guarantee that you will take action. So think of your asset, write it down. Phone, your new phone, your new ring, your engagement ring, your Christian Dior perfume, something that you value. For me, maybe my fishing. Now I'm a serious fishing animal, so my like a reel is ten thousand rand. So if I gave all my reels. It would be like, hmm. okay, I'll do it, I promise I'll do it. Remember your buddy that you did just now when you did the I rave? Choose your buddy. Choose somebody that's going to hold you accountable. This is your seal, your success, insurance, accountability leader. Choose somebody that will absolutely hold you. So stand with your stand with your buddy. I'm not standing. I'm not standing. And I'll I'll step you through the languaging. So face your buddy. You should have shake your buddy's hand. Say thank you for being my seal. And here is what I promise. What's the date? What's the date you're going to do this action? Bye. By the date, I will have action. So by 16th of October, I will lose 20 kilos. Or else, you take my asset. You take my asset. If I don't perform as promised, you take my asset. The seal my sign at the bottom. Make sure your seal signs. To hold you fully accountable with love. Get your seat. Put your papers down. Face me. Stand up. Stay standing. Emmy Cuddy talks about body poses. And one of the poses is a Superman pose. Put, get yourself in the Superman pose. Two hands. That's one. And the other one is the Wonder Woman pose. You know, the two hands. And by holding that for two minutes, you will change the electrochemical structure of your system. But I want you to do this. Put your hands into Superman pose and close your eyes and imagine that you use your full potential. Get a picture of you using your full potential. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Make the pictures brighter. Make the sounds louder. Be fully associated. Be there. Be in it. Feel that feeling. Let every single cell get that feeling of super success, happiness, peace, love, joy, abundance. Breathe it in, build the picture. Because if you can see it, you can create it. And one last time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much, and a lovely afternoon. Last chance to use your potential. I have CDs for you guys. Come and grab CDs.